Fault finding is important as it is with any piece of equipment. Slushy machines are no different. They have moving parts and adjustments and it's really quite simple to diagnose the problems if you've just got a little bit of information. Now, a normal machine as this one, you can see the motion of the spirals is equal. There's a consistent tone to the machine. There's nothing out of the ordinary. This machine is, is working in, in perfect order. This sound, which could also be a high squealing sound, is a deteriorating fan motor. The fan motor over a period of time gets very, very hot and it's required to suck the air through the machine to chill the gas down so that it can freeze your product. If they do wear, like any fan, over a period of time and depending on the amount of dust in the air and other factors that affect them. If your fan starts to make this noise or similar noise, then you are best to turn the machine off and advise us or a technician straight away. Over a period of time, the gearboxes, which are turning the spirals here, deteriorate and that's accelerated rapidly if you mix too much water in with your product. The machines are designed to work in a range of both temperature and bricks of the product that you're using. So if your product is less than say 10 and a half bricks, you're excessively loading the gearbox such that the, the gearbox can be damaged. Now this is a, a cab gearbox whereby the gear has actually split and you can hear it, the, the clicking, every single rotation of the gear. That gearbox will not be able to turn the product within possibly minutes or hours and therefore the machine, that machine can't be used. If you find that your spiral keeps stopping, it could be just jamming on a piece of ice. You need to check that the mix ratio of your product is as per specification. In the case of Frusia, very accurately, one part of Frusia plus five parts of water to equal a total of six parts. If you try and stretch the water to six parts or some other formula, you'll drop below the 10 bricks that the machine will operate at and it will lock up the auger. You also need to inspect your auger. Now this is a solid auger. Um, it's, it's all in one piece, manufactured together. Obviously if any of the components are broken, then it becomes unusable. Uh, some of the, the augers or spirals look like this, where they have a metal bar through and a nut at the back here and the split pin just to hold it on. If that nut comes loose, then the auger can twist too much, therefore locking onto the ice as it's turning. So that's just part of making sure the adjustment is correct when you're doing your servicing. If you find that the auger keeps stopping or going like this, it could be that it's one of the gears in the gearbox is actually about to break or it is already damaged. And uh, no matter how much we look at this, it's not going to solve the problem. A sound in the machine, we can usually diagnose that by under which switch does that sound occur. For example, if you are getting a sound that only occurs when you turn on your left spiral, but not when you turn on your right spiral, then that would indicate that the problem is with the left spiral. There are situations where that can be misleading. With this machine, when we turn the spiral on, it operates quite satisfactorily. However, when we turn on the chilling switch for that bowl, you'll hear this buzzing noise, which is actually a problem with the electrics with the solenoid not being able to open, and that will require an electrical com electrically competent person to solve the problem. This section is about correct adjustment of the machine. You obviously want to get the most expansion you can out of your product, but you don't want to have it expanding too greatly that you can't extract it from the machine in a timely basis. So on the machine we've got here, 
you'll see dragon fruit flavored white grape juice. Now that has a very, very low sugar content. In fact, it's only got the natural fructose of the juice. So you'll see that it's just rolling nicely at the top. It's it got a good expansion level and you'll observe that the consistency is correct. It's not too runny. It's not too ice picky. And uh, it's getting full expansion. This is set by the adjuster on the back of the machine here. By turning it in a clockwise direction, we reduce the amount of iciness and by screwing in an anti-clockwise direction, we increase it from the mid-range. All machines have this dial, but in some machines it is a bit more difficult to get to. On the GBG and Syncotel machines, you do require a screwdriver to make the adjustment. We've now set this machine up so that it's definitely icing too much. You'll see it's very, very high at the top. It's a little bit white crusty. In fact, it's trying to push the lid off. Adjustment is only of value when the product is in this state. In the last couple of minutes, really, of, of the freezing process, it has no effect in accelerating the chilling of the product to this state. On the left, we're using a totally different product. This is a Divinity Lemon Silla, which is, has a, a much higher sugar content. It's a, a very creamy sorbet. And uh, you'll notice, as I dispense it, the totally different consistency of the two products, requiring slightly different settings of the adjuster on the rear. This section is about leaks. Your, your drip tray is basically designed to catch any product that you've spilt when serving, but it also has a pipe that runs down into it that holds, that catches the condensation from the machine. That's quite normal. However, it may overfill the tray on very hot, humid days. So don't be concerned about that. You may need to put some sort of extra catch tray underneath the machine to help in that situation. The other cause of leakage into the tray is obviously trap, just simple things like dripping taps. If the o-ring or the bottom plug in your plunger hasn't been lubricated and cleaned properly, then the product can bypass or it won't sit down home properly, it sticks and it will just dribble and leak. To remedy the situation, just make sure it's been correctly lubricated and cleaned as per the cleaning procedure. The other leaks are, are more serious. The, the primary one where you see slush or coloured liquid in your tray is because the rear seal, when, when it was put onto the machine, either hasn't been put on correctly and it's curled in underneath the bowl, or it's got some sort of damage, like this one has where someone's tried to clean it with some sharp object, leaving a ragged edge which the bowl can't seal against. And even putting large amounts of lubricant, which we don't recommend, will probably not seal that correctly. It needs to be replaced. You must also make sure that they're properly cleaned um, on both sides and the surface that it sits on. That's the, the biggest single cause of juice running down underneath the bowl and into the tray. It will drop the whole of the bowl into the tray and all over the floor. So it's really good to make sure you've got this correct. The other leaks that you will find are more serious. They generally involve a black or dark, usually very thick product running down, possibly underneath the, the, the actual bowl itself into the tray, but generally more into the back of the machine or even down behind the machine or underneath the machine onto the bench. This is caused by, in the first instance, this seal that's inside your spiral, uh, either being worn out like this one is, it, it, it will turn back on itself very easily. This one's out of a cab fabby machine, um, or it hasn't been clean, it hasn't got sufficient lubricant on it. Because this is turning all the time, it's protecting the machine from the juice going down along the shaft and into the machine where it makes its way through to the gearbox. The gearbox will heat the product up, which is why it's black, because it's the sugars or the fructose within the, within the product that's causing it to go black, and it runs down into the, the electrics and the mechanical components of the machine. The only way to resolve this is to remove the gearbox and the drive shafts and replace the internal seals, as well as solve the problem with the external seal that you clean during regular maintenance. You must get someone 
technical to deal with this problem.